you ever wanted a honeycomb base for your laser, uh, I don't do much cutting, but occasionally I, I have a little something to cut out and I got a few of these I need to make. And I didn't want to ruin my board and it always makes a lot better cut if you have a honeycomb underneath, but honeycombs are expensive. I'm going to show you how to make one for just a few bucks. Coming up. I'm Roger walking with the shop and what I've made for my lasers is a honeycomb bed for when I do have to do a little bit of cutting. And if you price them out they can be anywhere from fifty to well over a hundred dollars depending on what size you want. I made this one here for just a few bucks. I mean I've got less than, less than fifteen dollars in this and I've got a whole bunch of extra material I can make more. Uh, what's it made out of? Right here you see a Dollar Tree cookie sheet baking pan, whatever you want to call it. Jelly roll pan is a technical name. $1.25. And contents, this is plaster lath. You can get this at your home store. Comes in a, uh, at least at the store I went to. The piece is 27 inches wide and 96 inches long. So you've got a whole bunch of this material to work with. All I did for this Dollar Tree pan was I cut four pieces to fit it. And I cut it so that the uh, little shapes in there go different directions. And I made sure they were flat, of course. Then that just sits in the pan. And I set it on the laser. I do my cutting. Any debris that accumulates in the bottom, and I shouldn't have done that right there, you can just take these out, dump it out, and go. And all you need to make this, a pair of tin snips, and some good leather gloves or cut resistor gloves because the edges of this stuff are sharp. But it's a very, very simple process, and I'll give you a little demonstration on how well it works. Okay, I already have my height set because I made a few of these already. Let's get my material in there and get it squared up on the corner. And I messed with this, now I don't have my stuff flat. There we go. And of course I always frame my stuff first because every once in a while one of these will just go wild and decide to go off on its own so I want to make sure that I'm on my material. I'm doing this at uh, 6 millimeters a second, 100% power, two passes. This is 3.5 millimeter Baltic birch plywood in a single pass. I'm having trouble with it, just not quite cutting all the way through. And if I slow it down too much more it scorches too much. We'll get this going here. Okay, this should drop right out of there, and it does. Perfect cutout. And one of the reasons I like to use the honeycomb underneath this, I get very, very little, if any, scorching on the back. Whereas if you have it down on a piece of wood, it scorches quite a bit. 
I'll do a little demonstration of that here. Okay, I'm making this one much smaller because I don't have enough room on that piece of wood to do a full-size one, but you'll get the idea here, and this will take less time. We'll do a little framing here. Okay, we're good. This is sitting on top of a piece of pine, and it's the same setting, cutting. And you see how much it's scorched in the back. Uh, this is the front here. This is the back. It scorches quite a bit. That's one of the reasons I like to have the honeycomb underneath. And I definitely want something underneath so that I don't spoil my spoil board. You can already see I've got a few uh, things there where it kind of missed its mark. So we've got a couple of oops, got an oopsie there, got a couple of oopsies there, got one up there, but that's why they call it a spoil board. Okay, another way you could do this would be to make a wood frame and put a piece of this on top, staple it down, and I would put some more layers underneath. Then have some type of backer underneath to make it easy to uh, catch any debris and soot and stuff like that. It's very easy to clean up that way. Uh, so what did this cost? Got a dollar twenty-five in that cookie sheet and that sheet of uh, plaster lath. This is steel. Was I think. $12 or something like that. So I've got less $15 on this and I got enough of this stuff left over. I can make several more of these. Or if this here ever gets too nasty, I'll just cut some more pieces. So there's just kind of a alternative to buying a pre-made honeycomb board. Got anything out of this? Appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Why's I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.